This is a bonus episode of Making Sunday Happen, a guide to V-Mix with Paul Richards. Let's do it. This is the definitive podcast for helping you plan, create, and execute dynamic worship experiences at your church. Useful, practical content in the areas of production, worship, communications, first impressions, and more. This is Making Sunday Happen. Welcome to this bonus episode of Making Sunday Happen. This week, I welcome Paul Richards back to the podcast. Paul is the Chief Streaming Officer at Stream Geeks. I'm talking with Paul today about vMix, which if you're unfamiliar, vMix is a live production and streaming software for Windows, and you can create professional live video productions, and you can also live stream to your favorite streaming providers like Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. I want to clarify here, this is a Windows-only software. So if you are a Mac user or your church is a Mac house, I would suggest looking at solutions like OBS for you and your church. Also, if you go to our podcast URL, makingsundayhappen.com, and click on the production uh, tab or the uh, production uh, link under the categories tab. Uh, There you'll find other podcast episodes that you might want to check out, some additional training on live streaming and providers and more. Again, that's makingsundayhappen.com. Just click on categories and click on production, and all of it will be right there for you. Uh, If you're looking for a new live streaming software solution or you want to learn more about vMix, this is the episode for you. Paul has written a detailed book on the software, and we're going to dive into that today. You can get the guide completely free at streamgeeks.us. That's streamgeeks.us if you want to pick it up and follow along with our conversation today. All right, we'll dive right into my interview with Paul right after this. Here we go. After three successful educational sessions this year, Worship Summit Live is back in time for houses of worship to acquire critical technical training for a busy upcoming holiday worship season. On Wednesday, November 18th, 2020, the Worship Summit Live 4 virtual event will host church production and technology experts who will demonstrate the best methods to safely produce engaging worship celebrations for virtual congregations. Attendees can view technical sessions at Worship Summit Live for free, as well as access a separate networking and collaboration meeting via Zoom for only $5. Ever since so many of us have been forced to socially distance, houses of worship have sought to seek new ways to meet spiritual needs of their congregations. This extremely popular event will provide worship leaders, musicians, volunteers, and administrators with practical tools they need to create high-quality live productions or video recordings of spiritual services. This half-day event format will focus intently on technical topics, including deep dives in the popular video production platforms, including OBS, Wirecast, and vMix. So the cool thing about our summit is our ability to host a bunch of great speakers, but also provide breakout sessions so that you can get one-on-one time with our presenters. Basically, each speaker is going to get a chance to cover specific topics on church production, and then they'll be able to break out in a Zoom video conference call where you can join them for one-on-one small group conversations. Skills taught during Worship Summit Live 4 should continue to guide technology leaders whether worship gatherings are remote, in-person, or existing in a hybrid format. Learn more and register today at worshipsummit.live. Hey guys, today I welcome back Paul Richards to the podcast. Paul is the chief streaming officer at the Stream Geeks and the author of Live Streaming is Smart Marketing and the unofficial guide to vMix, which we're going to talk about today, and other books. Paul teaches over 20,000 students taking courses on live video production, mobile streaming, and more. Paul, welcome back, man. Thanks for hanging out. Love to be here, Carl. I'm excited for this podcast. Yeah, me too, man. So, all right, so let's dive right in. VMix. So, we were talking uh, a few minutes ago about how a lot of churches kind of start with OBS uh, and then kind of 
graduate to vMix. Um, this is a PC specific platform, correct? So kind of give us an overview of what vMix is and, uh, and you wrote a whole guide about it. So kind of give us a, an overview of that too. Yeah, so in the live streaming landscape, there are maybe hundreds of live streaming software solutions out there. Um, you can literally go to YouTube and use a webcam and live stream. And a lot of churches do that. Um, and literally, most churches are looking for the easiest way to get started. And then when they start to see how important and powerful the technology is for keeping their congregations together, and especially in these times where we're all socially distant, um, they start to think, you know, what are the alternatives? How can we improve this, especially with the churches who have, you know, uh, volunteers? and media directors and start to really kind of own the production value and the excellence of the production that they're trying to make. And that leads them to stuff like OBS, right? Where you can have lower thirds and graphics and multiple cameras. And then eventually into some of the more, I don't want to say expensive solutions, but paid options where you're really starting to become a professional broadcaster. And vMix is kind of there in the middle between totally free and really expensive. So you can get started uh, with a free option and then they have like a $60 option. So it's a nice kind of step. And it really, the features that it has gives churches more than the probably ever need. And so it's a nice place where a lot of churches who have teams that want to really create a perfect, uh, really good looking production, they end up there and they're usually really happy with their uh, choice to do so. So where did the guide come from? You are obviously seeing a lot of churches and people needing some additional training on the software. Um, so kind of tell me how that came about and then the, the journey of writing the, the guide. Yeah, well, the Stream Geeks, you know, that's really what we, we try to do is to help churches and other organizations leverage the power of live streaming to share the message of God and the messages, you know, that their organizations are all about. You know that I wrote the unofficial guide to the open broadcaster software, and that was really uh, popular. And I learned so much the power of having a book where someone can reference the actual book as they're working on their computer and kind of use it as a reference to go back and forth between you know different areas in a reference guide. And I go to a lot of churches and I see them using OBS and they've got the book right there. And uh, the vMix book that I just released, the unofficial guide to vMix is the same thing. You know, I really wanted to step people A to Z, read this book in an hour. You're really going to understand the vocabulary, understand all the features that this software can offer. You can give it to a volunteer um, who maybe is trying to get involved, but doesn't have the time to, to kind of go through, um, you know, be at the church. And by the way, we give these books away for free. So the PDF version of this is totally free. And so it just helps people get started and really learn, you know, the basics and then some of the more advanced features of these live streaming softwares. So there's a lot out there, a lot of video production software out there. How does vMix compare to some of the other uh, types of software out there? Well, so I've been using vMix for about six years. And I'd say the most important thing that vMix does and has done for a long time is listen to their customers and make amazing features happen year after year. And so like one, for example, is called vMix Call. And basically you click a button and you can send a link to anyone in the world and they can join your production. Literally, it's super easy. I, well, there's a chapter in this book about how to integrate Zoom with vMix. And I've done a really popular chapter about how to integrate OBS and Zoom together. And that allows you to host these video conference calls and do a bunch of graphics and overlays. But with vMix call, having the button just right there, and it, it jumps right in, it's just incredible. Um, another technology that we've talked about that a lot of churches are using is called NDI. And that's an IP-based video protocol that's totally free. And it allows you to send video from, let's say, the pastor's laptop where he has some slides back to the live streaming computer over Wi-Fi or over an Ethernet connection. And vMix has been literally one of the most easy to use and feature-rich supporters of NDI from the very beginning. I remember when they first introduced it. So it's very feature-rich, not that expensive. And um, I think that here's the main takeaway, Carl, for why people choose vMix, in my opinion. When you're first getting started with live streaming software, you don't really know 
every feature that you need right now. Am I going to need virtual sets? I don't know. Am I going to need instant replay for a church? Probably not. There's a lot of it, but there's a lot of great features. But the the main takeaway is is that you want to start learning a software that's not going to have a technical block for you. Where it's like I spent. 20 hours learning OBS, but now I know for a fact that I can't use it and I got to start all over with vMix or Wirecast or another software because it doesn't do all the things that I need. And so with vMix, you can pretty much know for sure that there's so many features in this software that that time you're investing to learn it will probably serve you for the rest of your life because there's literally so much meat there that you're going to become, it's, it becomes a valuable tool. Of, you'll become a valuable asset for your church and any organization that you help with live streaming because it truly is used by the top broadcasters around the world. Tell me about some of the additions. So I might choose a certain addition based on the fit for my church or my budget needs or something like that. So tell, tell me about that. Yeah. So one of the cool things about vMix is you can get it 100% for free for 60 days. And so just fully loaded, everything unlocked, 60 days, see what you need to use. And after 60 days, it becomes like a standard definition stream. Uh, you can get started at a basic edition, which is like $60. And that edition uh, has some limitations, but it is HD. Uh, but you might only be able to have like one camera and maybe a limited amount of overlays. Um, as they step up, you get more features like uh, vMix call callers, um, PTZ camera controls, and, and different features like that, 4K capabilities, and then up to like instant replay and things, which are really reserved for sports that probably most churches will never really need. Um, but then again, you know, it's kind of like that breadth of feature, feature uh, sets that if, if you're just starting out, but you think that you want to get serious with live streaming, you can make a, a good decision by kind of like choosing the one that you're going to grow with. I think me and you should start an instant replay for churches. Uh, <laughs> let's hear that again, Pastor. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, tell me about some of the multi-view options in the software. This would be good for like a... Uh, uh, can I use it for a switcher setup? Uh, if I'm doing a live uh, broadcast with multiple cameras in my room uh, or something like that. Tell me about some of the multi-view options. Yeah, and I'm a huge proponent, uh, huge, you know, I really love software switchers because when you get into software, it's so flexible. You know, I'm, there's nothing against Blackmagic switchers, for example, but it's basically like, switch, 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 switch. And maybe you get some picture in picture and you know there are some options. But when you get into the software world, whether you're using OBS, Wirecast, vMix, any of the software solutions, you, know, you can do things like overlays and you can yep. design things in Photoshop and move things around. And the, the opportunities are really limitless. Um, Multiview has two different... Um, there's kind of two different things with, with multi-view. One is you can have 10 layers built into a single input. So a lot of times I'll organize an input where I have, you know, the pastor and maybe a Zoom call. So maybe, you know, uh, 50 families and then next to all, both of those, a PowerPoint presentation. And then you can like mix and match those in different scenarios. So pastor full screen, now, now merge that to pastor next to the families, next to his PowerPoint or next to a video and just kind of maybe make four or five different scenes uh, that have multi-view together. Another thing that's also called multi-view is for a producer where they can see multiple inputs at the same time. So if the church right. has four or five cameras, they can just glance over at a multi-view on a secondary monitor that's got like four cameras and they can go, okay, looking at all, all six cameras right now and then switch to that camera mm -hmm. they want. Tell me about the, the over, you mentioned overlays. Tell me about some lower third capability, uh, animated uh, lower thirds. Can I do that? And other graphics, overlays, PNGs. How do I do overlays? Well, vMix comes with a graphics overlay builder. And it also like so that you can build any custom animated graphic that you'd like. And they, they just released a brand new one called the GT Title Editor, which is really great. Um, it allows you to just you know, design something in Photoshop or design something from their builder. 
animate it, bring it into vMix, and then manage it inside of vMix where you can have titles and edit them and change them as, as needed. They also come with the, like 100 different stock options that you can click a button and just bring it right in, animated graphics and overlays. My favorite is actually the vMix social component, which actually allows you to display Facebook comments, YouTube comments directly onto the live stream and into your production as well. Is there an approval? Well. Is there an approval process so I see it come in and then I can push it live? Yeah, that's one of the really nice features of vMix Social is that there's like a queuing system. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you could have a second computer. You could give a volunteer an iPad. They type in the IP address of vMix Social. They look at all of the comments. They put the ones that they'd like into a queue. And then you can show the queue to the pastor, essentially. And then the pastor can just look at like five out of the hundred that are out there. And then he can click a button to send it directly to the live stream and address that individual comment out of the possible hundreds that are out there. Good. Tell me about live streaming with vMix. How do I do that? Well, one of the things I've always liked about live streaming with vMix is that you can live stream to three different locations. And so at the same time. And so, yes, you can live stream to restream.io and then they stream it from the cloud to 100 destinations, right? Which is probably more than most people need. And you have to pay monthly for something like, like restream. Um, with vMix, you can just turn on and off up to three streams. And there's some interesting things to think about with that. So first of all, yes, you can live stream. You can live stream in 1080. You can live stream in 4K. You can live stream to YouTube. You can live stream to Facebook at the same time. You could live stream to another site as well at the same time. But an interesting thing that a lot of churches, I think, are going to start doing more and more is what I call like almost like a shoutcast. So let's say you like, like half an hour before the stream or 10 minutes before the stream, you could just stream to Facebook and just talk directly to Facebook and get, you know, like do like a social shout there and say, look, everyone's going to go to YouTube after this. Here's the link and then start streaming to YouTube so that you can engage LinkedIn and different streaming Twitch, different streaming spaces, maybe just for a little bit, and then try to gather your whole audience in one space, which does definitely get um, you know, a more community feeling to get everyone in one space, even if that one space is Zoom, right? Maybe you just start streaming to YouTube, you start streaming to Facebook, and you're streaming there, you say, all right, everybody, please join the Zoom. And because we want to see your beautiful faces, we want to collaborate, want to hear from you, we want to do the breakout sessions. Um, and you start streaming to these places, and then you turn those streams off at some point to really push people to get into the Zoom and get that like community feeling. Good, good. You mentioned virtual sets earlier. Um, how can I create a custom virtual set and 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 build it within the software for my needs? So virtual sets are awesome, and uh, you do need a green screen, just straight up. You need a green screen. You need to have some decent lighting to pull this off, but mm -hmm. you can build your own custom virtual sets. I actually have published for free some really great virtual sets just for churches um, that are a lot of fun, actually, and I can... Um, do you want me to screen share and show you a few? Yeah, yeah, you can show me. So, and I know for, the, for those who are on the podcast, they... Uh, they're just listening. So I'll try to do my best to describe this. But essentially, here is a virtual set. And the cool thing about uh, vMix virtual sets is it has a zooming capability. So it really looks realistic. And if you're just a pastor who wants to you know, create a quick update video and you have a green screen, you can make it, makes it look like you're in either your church or a similar church and uh, really make these kind of beautiful, short little YouTube clips and different things where if you have a messy background, which I know so many pastors do, it's not your fault, but um, putting a green screen and a virtual set will immediately make you look a lot more professional um, when you make videos. How many do you have? Do you have some uh, other, other settings? And it kind of walk me through the process of um, if, I'm, if I'm using these, what are some things that I could use them for? Yeah. So I have published personally about 10 or 15. And so I've got different, different uh, worship set areas that all are supported inside of vMix. Um, there's some with stained glass windows. There's some with traditional kind of Christian churches that I have a synagogue, a mosque, different, try to do different faiths. And essentially uh, you can put up a green screen, bring your video into vMix, use a chroma key, 
And the chroma key allows you to remove the background from you. Mm -hmm. You can insert yourself into this virtual set. And virtual sets can be even as advanced as having like a screen behind you. So you could really look like you're in a professional setting with a television behind you. And that television behind you could be your PowerPoint presentation. And it's really easy to use, but it is, that is partially why I wrote the book, right? So that you could read this chapter on virtual sets, really get a good feeling for how they work, and then get all the free ones that I've already published. Speaking of doing your own custom ones, I do think that churches should do it because it's not very hard. Uh, take a picture of your church, right? And then now you can be inside your church from home or from um, you know, your, your desk that might be across campus and make it a lot easier for you to quickly create videos, even if you're... And by the way, something we haven't talked about, you're probably going to get to this, Carl, but right now I'm using vMix and I'm pumping all of my video into Zoom. So if you have these beautiful virtual sets that you can put yourself inside of, you can use those in all of your Zoom meetings with, you know, with parents and teachers and people that you're working with so that, you know, again, you're not in this busy office space that might be a, you know, not the best background and your actual looks actually looks like you are in the church. I know that you guys work a lot with PTZ uh, cameras. T- tell me how uh, PTZ uh, integrates with the software, how you can enable uh, controls and, and that sort of thing. That is one of my favorite parts of vMix. It really is. And so what vMix allows you to do is with the 4K version of vMix, you can pan, tilt, and zoom cameras. So it really makes camera control easy for professionals because you can have a single camera operator uh, using vMix, which a lot of times churches have one person, right? One volunteer. That single volunteer can zoom into the pastor, can call presets and do it all within vMix without having to leave the software. So that's how our producer does it. We have one guy, he produces our live streams. He's able to zoom in. He's able to call PTZ camera presets. And uh, at PTZ Optics, we've worked really hard to integrate all of our camera controls into vMix so that um, folks can just very simply click a button and the camera goes exactly where they need to go. One of the biggest values of that is the fact that one or two PTZ cameras can give you five or 10 views within your church. So if you know that you're going to cut away to a choir or you're going to go to a specific space to show a baptism or a specific space to show you know, uh, a flute player, for example, or the bells during the Christmas holiday, you can set all of that up beforehand. And then it's as easy as a volunteer just clicking buttons um, and the cameras go directly to those spaces. Good. Uh, you mentioned Zoom a little bit. Is there anything, any other integration that you want to talk about between vMix and, uh, and Zoom? Well, you can definitely integrate vMix and Zoom together. I'm doing it right now. You can integrate it for video and audio. One of the things that a lot of churches, I think, uh, are really going to appreciate is vMix's advanced audio functionality. So vMix supports VST3 plugins, and I'm using them right now. And because we're on the podcast, Carl, what I'd like to do is just turn them off real quick so you can hear the difference. Yeah. Uh, Those who use VST3 plugins, they use it maybe with Pro Tools or Ableton Live and some like high-end digital audio workstations. And those digital audio workstations are great, um, but Zoom doesn't generally have a lot of options for audio, although they are getting better, by the way, they have a new high fidelity mode. But let me, what I'm doing is I'm capturing my audio, bringing it into vMix and sending it back to Zoom. So let me turn off my noise suppression algorithm and my Renaissance Axe, which really makes my voice sound more robust so you can hear the difference. Here we go. All right. So now it's off, Carl. And can you hear the difference? Yeah. Little, little barrel sounding. Yeah, and I've made you know hundreds of live streams, hundreds of videos without this, and I listen to the old ones, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, how did I spend so much time, and I don't even sound crisp or clear, and now with these back on, it's so much easier, more robust to hear, and so when you're working with a church stream, um, a lot of times there might be a little bit of a buzz coming in from your audio mixer, 
Um, it allows you to essentially create custom audio mixes for your broadcast mm-hmm. before you send it to Zoom, before you stream it out to YouTube and Facebook. And uh, it's really, really affordable to get these VST3 plugins from companies like Waves and others that can just solve advanced audio issues. So if you're an audio guy, you're, you're thinking right now, wow, that's awesome because you can't do that in OBS. You can't do that in a lot of other streaming softwares. And audio people just go crazy for it because it really changes the game. Good. Uh, tell me about playlists. Um, how can I automate my productions uh, with, with playlists, with a playlist feature? Yeah, playlist is one that you yeah, again you probably won't find in a lot of other streaming softwares. And I really enjoy the playlist feature. I'll give you a, a super easy example. So playlists allow you to basically click a button and then VMix will just go from one sh- to the next to the next to the next in a loop. And you say, play this for 10 seconds, play this for 20 seconds, do this for 30 seconds. One of my favorite features for churches, especially during like a pre-show, is to have the PTZ cameras slowly panning and moving around the church before the live stream. So maybe you have a five minute countdown timer and the cameras are actually just slowly panning left and right. And so inside the playlist feature, you can say, you know, go from where the pastor is to over here, then 10 seconds over here, and then fade to the camera moving over here. And you can literally just have five minutes of cameras being moved around, getting everything set up. And it just click a button and then you just wait five minutes, do some other stuff. And all of that is automated for you in the playlist feature. Good, 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 good. What are vMix triggers? So vMix triggers and shortcuts, I should mention, with triggers are Mm -hmm. just ways to make your production easier and automate them. So shortcuts essentially are you can click a button and something happens. So a lot of people like to have uh, uh, Elgato Stream Deck which is like a really affordable little button keyboard that connects via USB. And you could say, you know, you could literally have all the camera presets with little tiny buttons that says, you know, pastor walking around, pastor zoomed out, stage wide, band, all these different buttons for you automatically. You can also do those with a keyboard. You can do them with a mouse. You can do them with anything on your, in your computer to just trigger things to happen. Now, vMix triggers, so sh- shortcuts are just click a button, something happens. It could be an overlay, it could be a camera switch, it could be a camera movement, it could be you know an intro video, an outro video, it could start streaming, it could do anything. Triggers help to automate the entire production, and it really is good for volunteers. So for example, let's say you have an intro video to your live stream, it's one minute long. You can trigger at the end of that one minute to automatically switch to the camera of the pastor. Or if you know you have an outro video and then you want to trigger after the outro video is over to stop streaming. Another one a lot of people like to do is to trigger the recording. Because a lot of times people forget <laughs> to record. Yeah. And so it's like, well, as soon as you go to this input, start recording. A lot of churches are always telling me they forgot to record. And as you probably know, Carl, when you live stream, the quality isn't as good as if you record directly to your computer just right. because of bandwidth and fluctuation. So if you record in a high quality on your computer that you can um, you know, upload that to YouTube and Facebook later and it's much better playback. quality. Yeah. Um, okay. A lot of people might be thinking there's no Mac version. What? Mm-hmm. So tell me, uh, is there a Mac version on the horizon that you know about? Um, are you having trouble with it on PC? Tell me that. Is that a struggle at all? So... Basically, you know, VMAX is made for Windows. And that is why, and I've spoken to them about this, that is why they are so far ahead of other solutions that also support Mac and Windows. When you support Mac and Windows, which OBS does and many others, including Wirecast, that's great because then you have two user bases, but it, you, it takes twice as long to develop a new feature. Right. So VMAX has just gone, if you're a Mac user, we're not going to ever make a Mac version ever but we're always going to be that much further ahead of pretty much anybody else because we just focused on Windows. So it is an issue for churches who are Mac users. This is not the software for you, right? Unless you want to do a boot camp scenario. And in general, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Macs aren't great for streaming. I mean, I'll just be honest. They're not. Um, It's very difficult to put a PCIe card into a Mac. It's very, very easy to build a custom Windows computer 
for way less expensive than an Apple computer and put the graphics card you need in there, put the PCIe card in there, run it on Windows 10. It's, it's literally, ask anybody in the broadcast industry, nobody uses Macs. Uh, it's just, it, it, there's a few people that do. Uh, so I know a lot of churches like to use Macs. vMix is not the right solution for them. Okay. All right. Uh, last question for you. And we kind of touched on this. Do you see it as an upgrade from OBS? Obviously, it has more features. It has more things. Uh, what would be your last pitch to move people from OBS to, to vMix? Well, I really do think that OBS is an amazing place to start. And you can do so much with OBS. But at a certain point, you, you, a lot of churches realize that they're like, wow, for $60, I could have bought vMix and I could have skipped. Basically, now I have to retrain myself. And I think that's a, a scenario that a lot of churches get into. So the question is, like, how serious are you going to take this? Um, is it, are you just being forced to live stream something because, you know, the pastor's like, we need to do this right away. Get OBS. It's free. Get started. And it is a great solution. I have a total book on it. I'm a big fan of OBS. But like for me, it's like I consider it like an art. I really do. And like, so if you're the kind of person who's like, I want to like be the best I can possibly be. And it's not going to cost you too much money to get the, you know, full version of vMix. Um, you're going to, you know, start learning now. Don't invest hours and hours into OBS and then realize like, wow, I, it's so difficult to do all of this stuff. There's no like channels of overlay. There's so, it's such a difference. It's not even compare. It's not even apples and oranges. I mean, we're talking totally different solutions, but again, you know, is this just something you do on Sunday just to get through that, that stream and then you're done? Or are you trying to integrate Zoom? Are you trying to, you know, stream to multiple locations? Are you trying to have high quality recordings? Are you trying to use multiple cameras? Do you want the PTZ control integrated? Do you want to have social media comments come up on the screen? If any of those things are yes, start with something like vMix and then your learning curve on OBS, you can just throw that out the window and go, you know, that's great. We started there. Um, but let's invest in something where probably for the rest of your life, you're going to be finding new features and go, you know, like, wow, I'm still learning. It's a constant process of learning and becoming more excellent in your craft. You can tell I'm a vMix fan, right? Yeah. I mean, I like yeah. it. I've been using it for years. Yeah, good. Well, speaking of, tell us how to get the book and, and how to keep up with you guys. Yeah, so the unofficial guide to vMix is available on Amazon. We do that because then you can get a printed copy to you in roughly two days via Amazon Prime. But you can also download it on streamgeeks.us totally for free and print it out with your printer. That way you can get it instantly. And uh, we're hosting a worship summit coming up yeah. November 18th. It's a Wednesday, and it's going to be a totally free live stream for technical training. And there's going to be technical trainers talking about OBS, talking about Wirecast, talking about vMix and all of these, um, you know, technical, we actually did a worship summit recently and like 80% of the folks who we surveyed said, we want more technical training. Thank you for the leadership training. Thank you for, you know, the worship leadership stuff, but we want to learn technically how to improve our live streams and bring our volunteers and our technical, you know, AV people up to speed so that, you know, across the board, churches want to improve their production quality and become more excellent um, in what they're showing online. And so for this worship summit 4.0, it's our last worship summit of 2020. Uh, it's all going to be technical training and uh, it's perfect for those worship volunteers who have been playing around with live streaming stuff and are going, I want to take this more seriously. So I'm really excited for that on November 18th. Tell me about some of the speakers uh, and workshops that you have there. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with Jake Goslin, uh, the leader of Church mm -hmm. Front, but uh, he's going to be our keynote speaker. So I'm really excited to have him. I've been a huge fan of his and I've taken many of his courses and online videos. And he's been teaching so many folks how to do exactly that, improve their productions and their broadcast quality. Um, so Jake is going to be our keynote. And... With, the, with these streams, Carl, we always have a live stream and then a Zoom breakout. So you get to watch the live streams. And then when you feel compelled to say, I want to talk to Jake, 
or I want to meet with some of these keynotes, you can jump into the Zoom session and actually ask them questions and kind of talk to other people. And it's, it, again, that's another like 50-50 split where it's like some people like to watch the live stream and just learn. And then others just want to be in the Zoom session and just talk to other people and be like, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Can somebody please help me with this one question that I have? And that's why we have the Zoom collaboration sessions. But we also have um, Stephen Ballast, who is a really well-known OBS technical guru joining us. We have Seth Haberman, who's known as the digital pastor online. He's got a great YouTube channel and he's going to be talking about uh, pro audio visual. We also have Bill Tenney Britton, who's the author of Dancing with Dinosaurs. I don't know if you ever read that book, but it's about, you know, churches modernizing and trying to, you know, get from those dinosaur ages and turning into more what he calls rabbits. So we can multiply like rabbits and have more baptisms and really get involved. He's been transforming his whole church with OBS and some of the streaming technology he's using. And then usually we have worship bands who play. So we usually have about five to 10 worship bands who play in between. We're still going to have a few, but instead of worship bands this time, we're going to have 10 minute behind the scenes worship uh, tech tours. So it's going to be a speaker, 10 minute behind the scenes tour of church A, another speaker, another 10 minute behind the scenes video. So again, more of a focus on technical. We're still going to have some worship bands play, obviously, because we want to you know, worship together and and have that experience, but it's going to be a lot more technical this time. And we're going to be able to see a lot more uh, better perspective of what it's like to be live streaming in various different scenarios. Yeah. Well, love what you guys are doing over there. Um, uh, Love to just keeping up with you guys and and seeing what you're up to. Um, uh, Again, the, the VMix book is completely free. Uh, Streamgeeks.us, right? That's the URL. That's right. Awesome. Well, Paul, thanks so much for, for hanging out, man. Always a pleasure having you. And uh, man, thanks for all that you do for the kingdom and, uh, and for, for tech guys everywhere. Thanks for having me, Carl. I always love coming on. Introducing monthly custom media plans from 1230 Media. Affordable, no contract monthly plans for custom graphic design and video for your church. Custom sermon series designs, announcement graphics, social media graphics, sermon bumpers and trailers, promotional videos, countdowns, church announcement videos, and more. Choose between custom graphics, custom video, or graphics and video plans. Harness the power of a full creative team every month to serve your church or ministry with plans starting at only $600 per month. Join hundreds of churches using 1230 Media to transform your worship experience. Get started today at 1230.media slash pricing. That's 1230.media slash pricing. The show notes for this episode are available now at makingsundayhappen.com. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out on this bonus episode of the podcast. We love you guys. Continue to create amazing physical and online worship experiences at your church this weekend. We'll catch you next time. Making Sunday Happen is a production of the Ministry of 1230 Media. For show notes, archive episodes, and more free resources for your church, visit makingsundayhappen.com.